Hello. Going to do a long rant. Uh, I just want to get my ideas together. It's very hard to put stuff into ideas when you haven't said it before because you have to form the thoughts into like um, sentences. But uh, I think that when I talk about things that I'm interested about, it's interesting for people to listen to me and because just my raw like motivation to talk about it is what makes a video entertaining. So um, I hope this will be more entertaining than like a source of existential fear. Um, so I want to talk about why um, society is just broken and what needs to be fixed about society. But that's like a kind of hopeful spin because I don't actually have solutions to like any of this because there's so many systemic issues that are interrelated and interwoven that when you try to fix one problem there's like five things that just are preventing you from doing that and when you try to fix those like you can't if you try to fix the broken parts of society one by one um you can't because of how the system rewards corruption and greed and like exploitation so um <clears throat> i i went into university thinking that um, i was an immortal i would ascend to heaven if i never orgasmed ever and uh then uh i got well, I wanted to study environmental sciences with a minor in physics. Um, didn't get into that because of my low bio mark. And so they put me as a physics major. And uh, three years later, I was failing courses when my mom died and I dropped out. Um, but when I was in university, I thought, hey, um, maybe... Uh, physics is, was a great course, uh, a great field. They had great profs. Um, I do like math. And so there is... I thought the profs were heretics, though, because I grew up with a background in Gnosticism and Jehovah's Witnesses, <laughs> and this is like, then these profs are saying stuff like, light follows these reproducible laws of mathematics, and that all of the laws of the universe can be broken down into mathematical equations. And that basically you can, if you can model something accurately, then you can predict what's going to happen based on that mathematical model if you have enough information on the system um, being the whatever you're trying to, to model. And you can make assumptions about um, how stuff interacts, etc. Um, like inside outside the system um, you can you can you can apply assumptions or um, like like estimations and um, that'll work depending on what scale you're working on and I thought hey that's bullshit God is the one who's responsible for gravity God's the one who made light um, this this uh, dark matter dark energy that's uh <clears throat> that's how uh, maybe God is supposed to communicate with us. But you look at um, you look at the Hadron Collider, and you look at um, people looking at dark matter, new neutrinos, neutrino observatory, and um, you notice that there's no hidden messages. Uh, there's no from from an intelligent, sentient being, and and then you look at you look at like humanity and say, oh, wait, um, people do orgasm whether they want to or not. Oh, uh, people are inherently greedy. Oh, um, there's a lot of wars going on. What's with that, God? Isn't this all preventable suffering? Why do, do does everybody just deserve to like, wait, wait if, 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 if this is all karma from past lives, then how are there so many, so many, so many billions of people like, <clears throat> we have so many people. How can there be so many people in the past who are all reincarnating to, like, 
live out the bad karma of, like, suffering if, like, there actually weren't that many people in history to reincarnate and, like, what? And, and, and with predation, what's with that? Like, whoa, 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 where, where do you draw the line between, like, what's a person? And what, 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 are, what are you supposed to explain? Are, are rabbits good and wolves bad? Uh, but then are humans bad for eating the rabbits? And then, like, well, what about, like, what about cats? Cats are cute, right? But if they knowingly eat a mouse, then are they being cruel? If they unknowingly eat a mouse, are they being cruel? What about fish? Fish, fish kind of look, they don't, they don't look, they don't look like people. They, but they have, like feelings they can experience pain but then plants can can plants experience pain like what what's with this is it a brain is it uh, if someone has a brain is that what makes them a person but then you can simulate brains on a computer and how do i know if i'm wait then <clears throat> so what differentiates me from the animal or the the computer simulation what this makes no sense and so, um, those are like the kind of problems I had to navigate my way through. And, um, the, those are good questions, but if you're trying to reach transcendence, then, like, spiritually, then those are, like, really depressing questions, too. Because, anyways, we don't have to get into that. Um, because then when you start asking those questions, you start asking, why were the Canaanites wiped out? Why were the Egyptian civilians wiped out? Um, what's with these laws about stoning and slavery and, and like, raping women? Like, what, why are, aren't these laws unfair? And like, what's, why was, what, if if we're suffering because of Adam eating a fruit, but I'm not Adam. That's some other guy. Why am I responsible for what he did? And why are what, 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 so predation before Adam ate fruit? There was no predation, but but now there is. So what did those animals do wrong? And and <clears throat> like where does it end? There's the human, and the human eats. The human is better than, like, the the other predators, and the other predators are better than, like, the herbivores. But then the herbivores eat the plants, and then the plants... The plants... The innocent flower actually fights the other flowers and blocks out the sunlight and competes for the water. And, like, are, they, are the flowers innocent? But they don't have a... Can they experience suffering? And so I just... I just ended up thinking, okay, you know what? I have some cognitive abilities. I'm self-aware. So whatever cognitive abilities are forming my consciousness and making me self-aware, <clears throat> that must be what's important. And I don't like pain and suffering. I don't like experiencing pain, mental or physical. So whenever something with a brain is experiencing pain, mental or physical, um, then that's bad. And that was my outlook, but then, then I end up with weird stuff like, wait, then do I weigh it by intelligence? So the worm doesn't matter as much as the human baby, but the adult parrot or cow is more intelligent than the human baby. Wait, what? So if I don't want to eat human babies, maybe I shouldn't be eating cows? So, so these are like really creepy questions. Um... But that was that was my experience with um, with rejecting cults. That's why I ended up rejecting cults because it it just wasn't it wasn't mapping with reality. And so then I looked at uh, politics because you know the Trans Pacific Partnership wanted to get rid of net neutrality, and net neutrality basically is what lets us visit any website we want 
um, talk to each other. Like, like net neutrality is what prevents us from being like North Korea or Egypt, where you're not allowed to visit most websites <laughs> um, unless you have putty and like SSH encryption and a proxy. But like most people don't know how to set that up. And uh, even if you do, it can be really laggy. So, um, yeah, that's annoying. Um, so I started following politics and Bernie's run and got hyped about Bernie and then kind of realized that Bernie doesn't really go against the military industrial complex. He, he was pro-environment. He is pro-environment because he knows that um, the planet's going to turn into a... Well, I hope he knows the planet's going to turn into a desert in like next 2,000 years because of um, CO2 emissions passing 400 parts per million, which basically means um, <clears throat> more clouds, more water vapor. Because, you know, when it's hot on a hot day and it gets... This is like... Okay, trigger warning. You know when it's hot on a hot day, the relative humidity rises, so it gets more humid? Um, so, like, the air, when it's hot, can hold more humidity. So, this is the, this is the sad part. Humidity, a.k.a. water vapor, a.k.a. clouds. They trap sunlight, just like the clouds on Venus trap sunlight and make it harder than Mercury. Different kind of clouds, but they still trap sunlight. So water vapor traps sunlight <clears throat> in the atmosphere. Water vapor is a greenhouse gas, but when it warms up, you get more water vapor because of relative humidity. It's a percentage. The air holds like a percentage of water for... I actually forget how relative humidity works, but we know it, it goes up when it gets hot. Um, that's that's like really bad because it's getting hotter at an unstoppable rate now because, well, 2017 we fucked up as a human species um, and doomed the planet to this runaway feedback loop. And uh, we don't know when it's going to stop. Sahara, uncontrolled expansion. Temperature, uncontrolled increase. Um, so water vapor is going to rise uncontrollably, and uh, and then we have these unsafe farming practices where we salinate the land, make it infertile, or where we just, well, we'll go what we do to aquifers. We always get rid of the aquifers for some short-term profits, um, even if it's better to leave stuff in the ground because those natural resources are going to skyrocket in prices once there's a shortage, um, whether water or oil. We dig it out for some short-term profits. So, um, so we know the planet. <clears throat> and when I, was, when I say the planet, I mean all of landmass, except maybe the poles and not the water, not the ocean. Everything's going to turn into desert. And, uh, I mean, that's, that's really bad. So, uh, I don't know why I brought this up, but, uh, oh yeah, because Bernie was against that. Bernie, Bernie didn't want that to happen, right? Um, neither did Jill Stein. Um, they were both against... They were both up against increasing the military budget. Jill Stein had some good ideas, like putting Snowden in charge of the NSA, um, nego peace negotiations in the Middle East, um, stop not sponsoring the uh, terrorist organizations, like, um, what is it? ISIS, Al-Qaeda... Um, Saudi Arabia blockading Yemen. I think they were only 
like bombing them with white phosphorus at that point, but that's still biological warf I mean chemical warfare. Uh wait, is it biological warfare? Maybe both. Anyways, um so that's bad. Uh and then well, speaking of chemical warfare, we're like blaming Assad for stuff which is easily debunked when like America's using depleted uranium and 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 toxic burn pits like just in Afghanistan and like ugh, Pakistan, Libya, Somalia, um, probably Niger now. Um, but this is during the elections, so not Niger. Uh, Iraq. They were at war with Iran. Uh, I'm trying to think of the other country. I don't remember. So, um, yeah, there's like all these countries and um, some politicians were like, yeah, we shouldn't really be invading them. Um, we should be focusing on infrastructure, on healthcare, on education system, on economic inequality. Um, but uh, yeah, economic inequality. So basically, uh, when you play a video game and you uh, you have like the system set up with capitalism where players can trade items and own stuff, um, you end up with a system where the wealth ends up at the top and uh, like a few guilds either have a cabal or some sort of like relationship where the, the money gets funneled to the top. Uh, not all games. A lot of games try to like have like money sinks and such, but like in today's world, money sinks would be like private jets and like, um, like I don't know what it, what do rich people spend their money on? Certainly not their employees. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> that's bad because like democracy is supposed to like. There's this. There is this like false hope that like democracy is going to solve everything and i agree with it because we don't actually have anything better um so with democracy you can you can apply that to capitalism to form uh to go past socialism all the way to marxism where you have syndicates or worker co-ops or at the very least unions uh, where the people uh, control the means of production. And that basically means to me that the industry is regulated by the workers. Um, so if the industry is screwing over the workers, the union can step in and say, hey, don't do that. Um, or else we won't work for you. Uh, if the, but in a co-op, the workers can say, hey, I think we should give ourselves a raise. And then they get a raise. Um, if the, if, if the industry is doing well, um, so if, if, if there's, um, a company getting large profits, uh, that results in a pay raise for workers rather than the workers still getting paid minimum wage. Um, if there is a, or for waitresses and waiters below minimum wage, <laughs> like what's with tipping anyways, um, <clears throat> Tipping shouldn't be, like, like, how is, tipping just contributes to, anyways, tipping is, I guess, required now, but, like, it shouldn't have to be required. People should just get paid a living wage. So, um, this applies to, like, Uber drivers and, you know, um, people who don't make minimum wage when they work. So, um, because, because that salary is not coming from the customer that's like you're begging people for money and like yeah that's anyways um i'm fine with that like tipping's fine but it should be in addition to you making minimum wage um not and apparently like the cost of living in you could live like five times as long off of a small fortune in like 
developing countries than in like Canada or United States. And like downtown, it's just the price skyrockets the farther you go downtown in any big city. So, um, yeah, I, everyone living in cities is like, cause everyone like wants to profit off each other. But like at the end of the day, it's just, we're just handing around currency and that currency has value because we agreed on it. Anyways, so why are worker co-ops good? Because um, it 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 helps like regulate the economic disparity, um, and that's kind of I think what Marx is uh, was talking about with workers controlling the means of production, means of production being like manufacturing and uh, yeah, manufacturing. Um, like it's fine to ship jobs over. I don't know. If you're not affected, it's fine to ship jobs overseas. But if those people get screwed over too, like, you, you, you gotta have people being able to survive. Um, otherwise, like, why? Did that just make sense if you work? Um, now, that, I guess I'm exploiting this because I don't, I just had received an inheritance and I don't work, so, um, so then I looked at, hey, why am I not, like, being altruistic, why am I not devoting myself to asceticism and donating all my money to the right causes, whether I think it's, uh, PETA or economic inequality or, um, starving people or should I even be helping like starving people if they're just gonna go and eat animals and torture animals for food because when I buy that meat at the grocery store if you actually look at the videos of what happens in the factory farms um, those animals get tortured especially chickens and crabs um, but I mean even like even the milk like you're basically saying I endorse rape when you buy milk um, and kidnapping calves. Anyways, but, I mean, there's a lot worse things than rape that goes on in the meat industry. But you're not supposed to talk about that, otherwise you'll get sued by the meat industry, unless you're a small person like me, who hasn't garnered too much attention, doesn't have a big following, because you can't sue every small person, but you can, if, when, if you're a big person at all, even, you'll get sued by the meat industry for saying stuff like that. Um, just like the intelligence agencies will go after you for saying stuff like how all of these CIA false flags and, uh, basically intelligence agencies assassinated President Kennedy, um, th th I think, what was it, 11 countries? It was like, what, 11 or 13 different, um, intelligence intelligence agencies from 13 different countries uh, warned U.S. intelligence agencies, so FBI, CIA, about the Twin Towers attack. And then Bush goes on vacation or whatever, and Dick Cheney's like, hey, um, NORAD, aerospace defense, just, just let it fly. Like, literally let it fly, and then... And then you have this controlled demolition of the Twin Towers. Like, that's, uh, you weren't supposed to demolish, demolish Twin Towers because of asbestos. So, yeah, so Dick Cheney and the intelligence agencies uh, were like, they let that controlled demolition happen. And I think it was really messy, but it was a good excuse for invading the Middle East. So there's a lot of earth metals and oil, mostly oil there. And with all that oil, you can form the petrodollar, you can strengthen the petrodollar, because if you control, if you have a monopoly on oil exports and you say, hey, puppet, dicta puppet dictator, <clears throat> whenever you sell oil, you're going to do it through our oil companies, or France's, or Britain's, or America's oil companies, you're going you're gonna to have these foreign investors controlling the oil exports, and whenever you sell the oil, it's going to be in U.S. dollars. And then what U.S. can do is everybody wants U.S. dollars. So Wall Street can say, hey, we're going to print lots and lots of money. And who cares about inflation because other countries are still buying up U.S. dollars. So that money is going to hold its value regardless of how much USD we print. We can just print 
print, 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 print. Lots and lots of money. And we're going to funnel it all. Funnel it all into the military and military contractors and revolving door of all these consultants and contractors and military dudes who just, you know, it's a good, it's a good, what, what did Trump say? Um, America is a great company, something like that. Um, <laughs> it's a... Uh, <clears throat> Blowing stuff up is a is a lucrative business, especially when you're a hitman for a big oil company. And there are a lot of big oil companies out there, so if you want to blockade civilians in Yemen or refuel Saudi bombers or sell white phosphorus to people, good business. Um, if you want to save lives, I mean, you could could use military for that. You could use the military for rebuilding crumbling infrastructure and roads and need the, all these renewable energy we need that Europe has already transitioned to or is transitioning. A lot of some countries have already like completely transitioned to renewable energy or at least one. So like this is a no-brainer. Why, why are we still burning coal? Um, or we I say now I say America. I'm going to talk about America from here on out because uh, the shows I watch uh, try to influence American politics. Because we know that um, the American citizens are the most powerful force in human history. Um, but but, but uh, back to my point about why everyone fails in society, why society fails, um, is... We're just apathetic. Um, so, so, so a lot of journalists try to wake up the American people, and so a lot of the news coverage I w watch from people who are enthused about politics, it's uh, it covers American politics because that's where that's where the big stuff happens. So, unfortunately, I don't actually know a lot about Canadian politics, but we have similar society to America, other than well, cops <clears throat> with cops in. Canada takes more than four to, or six was it six millimeters of pressure on a on a trigger to shoot someone accidentally. It takes more than that, because when you have a law enforcement modification, you don't accidentally shoot people. I guess you could. I guess you could accidentally shoot someone, but like, just ah, harder to be trigger happy if the trigger doesn't accidentally go off all the time on a Glock. Anyways, um. I used to think guns were bad, like, just in general, but I understand that when you have uncringed murderers, you do need law enforcement, you do need, you need, you do need peacekeepers. What you don't need is to just bomb everyone randomly with bombs, cause, or have a 10% <clears throat> success rate drone striking program which is 90% collateral casualties which happen to be the families of the targets uh man people have big families i guess we gotta prevent those martyrs from rising up by killing all the children before they can take revenge on u.s imperialist drone strikers at least drone strikers have come out and say yeah there's like there's no regulation, it's just who gives a shit if someone has a family and they might be a terrorist, we bomb the terrorist, I mean we drone strike the terrorist, we drone strike the family, um, we drone strike whoever's there. And that's how, uh, that's how the war on terror proceeds and then there's a lot of blowback and you get... Socialist countries like Libya, where Gaddafi says, I'm going to house every homeless person before I house my father. And he actually follows through with it until his father's death, trying to house everybody and his house father. I don't, <clears throat> I don't know the details, but he implemented uh, <clears throat> universal health care, or I think, do we call it single payer? Anyways, he implemented some form of universal health care, uh, like we have in Canada. He uh, he had some form of free tuition. Um, 
he was he housed all the homeless people, which is actually cheaper than having them on the streets because you don't have to pay for law enforcement and health care as much when people are given shelter because they don't get sick, they don't steal as much. Because, um, like, uh, believe it or not, shelter is actually a human need. Funny that. <clears throat> and then, um, he... what else? Oh yeah, <clears throat> and Gaddafi in uh, Syria, in, in not Syria, in Libya, wanted to uh, break away from dependence on the U.S. dollar. Well, that didn't work out because, uh, well, people like Hillary were like, yeah, um, if people break away from the U.S. dollar, U.S. dollar won't hold hold its value so well. We can't keep printing out all this currency. We're gonna topple Gaddafi. And so he was demonized and killed, and uh, Libya was destroyed. The entire country was destroyed, and now it's, I think, the worst country other than Yemen, and, well, because of the Saudi-U.S. blockade on Yemen, so that people are all starving, but... <clears throat> um, this was before Yemen, so Libya had went from, like, probably the best standard of living in the Middle East to the worst standard of living in the world, like, worse than North Korea. And, I think, you know, with North Korea, the Great Famine is like, been over for a while, and like, people actually have, like, access to technology, and yeah, they're still, like, <clears throat> yeah, there's still public executions, but, um, there's like a cult mentality, and I think, People are happier in North Korea than in Libya because in Libya, it's just a lawless terrorist place. Um, which reminds me of Tiger Swan in North Dakota. Uh, if you protest against oil companies, you're basically labeled as a terrorist, mercenary groups, or police forces, or the army, regardless what country you're in, if you're an American citizen or not, they're going to come down, treat you as a terrorist, and make sure those pipelines get built. <clears throat> Problem now was with uh, Syria. Syria didn't want pipeline to Qatar built. Um, Syria didn't want to sell all their oil in US dollars. And Syria allied with Russia had good relations with, I think, Iran, um, the RSII coalition, I don't, there was like two other countries, or one other country. Anyways, they, uh, they didn't want U.S. interests to meddle in their politics, and U.S. interests were like, we need that oil monopoly, we're gonna declare war on you, Russia back off, and Russia's like, no, because we know what happened to Libya. So this is blowback from the war on terror. Um, it's been happening for a while. Intelligence agencies have been messing around in South America for a long time, and South America is now recovering from that, now that attention shifted to Middle East, but now attention's back in South America. Um, <clears throat> and you get stuff like what's happening in Venezuela and Brazil um, with U.S. interests meddling with the politics there. Um, Venezuela reminds me remind me to talk about the election system and how democracy has been utterly destroyed. But um, well, not at the municipal level. At the municipal level, there's still democracy. But um, there, it's provably mm, it's been proven that like the voting machines in U.S. general elections are compromised and don't match the exit polls beyond, like, the margin of error. I think it was, like, 1 in 39 million chance that, like, 2012 election was, like, fair because of, like... And then you look at the statistics and it's like, wait, 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 wait. How do you have 109% voter turnout for this demographic? And so you see, oh, the votes are fractionalized. 
if you vote for this politician, it counts as more votes, and if you vote for that politician, like Jill Stein, it counts as less votes. So, anyways, um, and once upon a time, the Women's League of Voters used to run presidential debates, but then the uh, Republican and Democrat Party, uh, they, what do you call it when you, like, don't go to the Olympics? They bailed on that and basically said, we're not going to attend the debates because you're allowing other parties other than just Democrat and Republican to speak at these debates, and we don't want to have to debate with parties outside of our interests. So you have this two-party system which tries to polarize people to either end and say, hey, uh, we're, we're offering hope and change, and then not actually follow through. <clears throat> so everybody knows politicians are corrupt. Um, what they don't know is that the whole left versus right debate is basically fueled by the media, which is bought up by the CIA. Um, television's been bought up by CIA. Internet service providers are in the pocket of intelligence agencies. And um, what else? Social media. Social media uh, providers are in the pocket of intelligence agencies. So those are... Those um, those have the potential to move us towards a, in a totalitarian direction, where uh, even in a fascist direction, where well we already see it happening on like political discussion gets stifled on YouTube, on Twitter, on Facebook. Um, there's like a lot of censorship that happens already. If you try to talk about like, okay, well, <laughs> uh, I guess Niger is justified because it's like a misspelling of like the worst slur word in in the English language. But um, talking about any of the other countries that America bombs is like, no, you don't. Uh, it, it shouldn't be censored, and. Uh, and we shouldn't be bombing Niger either, not the civilians. Um, so yeah, um, there's a lot of blowback from U.S. foreign policy of just going and bombing suspected terrorists and then killing their families and whoever's present. And then, <clears throat> under Obama, drone uh, strikes skyrocketed. Under Trump, compared to Obama, drone killing skyrocketed. And so now it's just like, I think people... U.S. ran out of bombs in late 2016, I think. So it's like, how do you not have a b enough bombs? More than 50% of the U.S. federal budget for years has been spent on the military. How do you not have enough bombs? How do you not have enough bombs? Because we're using them all. I say we as in America, but I'm Canadian. Anyways, um... Okay, so why is so why is this so hard to fix? Um, because of special interest groups. I mean, no, not special. Because of um, because of the corruption, because of the deep state. Uh, the people who hold the power are not elected and therefore not accountable to the populace. And the people who are accountable to the populace, like politicians, um, <clears throat> it's easy to just get a handler and blackmail someone or like compromise their children's safety or just you know uh, slander people um like did you know the price of bernie's jacket is six hundred dollars okay it, it gets a lot worse than that but like people just make up stories all the time and it goes unchecked and so all of these <clears throat> all these major news outlets they i mean i shouldn't be doing the video i haven't had breakfast and it's like really late. Oh, I want to buy Bitcoin. I'm sad. Nobody. Uh, I got baited so hard. Bitcoin price fell below seven thousand USD, and so it was like at. <clears throat> I was ready to buy at like um, seven seventy Canadian, and then it fell to like sixty four Canadian, and I was ready to buy it up. And like two people offered, but then there's like this limit on like Interac, and the banks were closed, and then people were like, "I'm gonna sell you three thousand worth of Bitcoin," and then they're like, "Nope, never mind, never mind, I, I back out." 
And like people, oh, they were like panicking so hard last night. <laughs> and then the Bitcoin just rose back to normal. So I missed out on that chance. I, I didn't get to buy much. I, cause the banks were closed. Um, right. That's like the first time I'm like, I'm going to buy a bunch of Bitcoin. And then it's like, yeah, no, there's a limit on your interact and like banks are closed. <sighs> Cause people panic in the night. And then when they wake up in the morning, they're like, ah, oh, I'll just hold on to my cryptocurrency. Cause, um, well, asset forfeiture doesn't really work with against crypto. So, um, no, there's a lot of stuff. I think China's like trying to regulate crypto tax havens though. So, um, that's why the price crashed because China was like, yeah, stop selling at these exchanges. Maybe I should have bought it from an exchange. I don't know how. All I know is local Bitcoins. Anyways, that's so off topic. I'm so sorry. Um, it's just very relevant because I was like bummed out yesterday or this morning. I just stayed up originally I like didn't want to get into the trading because it's like I knew it would be super stressful and it is super stressful and then everybody in crypto trading when they're selling they're like always like super stressed and jumpy and like if you if you take five minutes to respond they're gonna be like oh no bye or f you it's like what what <laughs> like like yeah it's like working in customer service but I've never worked in customer service and now I don't think I want to <laughs> oh. so <clears throat> oh my god um society yeah we um we're just apathetic we don't give a fuck um about all these problems and uh, the the narrative of the media is um Democrats are evil, Republicans are good, Republicans are good, Republicans are evil, Democrats are bad. And that's like, it just polarized the people, divide and conquer, divide and conquer. Um, environmentalists are bad, it's a Chinese hoax. Um, we can't ban automatic rifles because even though it's really cheap and anyone with like any part can modify, not any part, but like, five dollar purchase at a hardware store you can modify a semi-automatic gun into a fully automatic gun and kill 300 people that's not going to be banned in the u.s because we deserve to have guns it's like what about background checks what about um law enforcement modifications on for police what about police training for de-escalation what about um stop and frisk what about cross check oh my god oh my god oh my god what about voting machines that use blockchain and open source and and observe what about observers for elections to validate the integrity what about why are exit polls banned why are exit polls banned for general elections why are exit polls banned in the u.s because they show the corruption anyways um what was i saying i was saying something about oh damn i am so sorry i lost my train of thought this is what happens when you play mobas all the time you just flip from thing to thing, react, 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 like a like a pro gamer. Ah, okay. Um. So, <clears throat> I think I was not talking about elections. Sorry, I was gonna say more on that spiel, but we don't address these problems. We don't hold the people accountable, and with a deep state, i.e., like intelligence agencies, military, industrial complex. Uh, a lot of people aren't held accountable, like Kissinger's never held to account. Um, war criminals aren't held accountable. Um, what was that one guy who was like sponsoring the, some coup? I don't remember. If you watch like the Jimmy Dore show or Sane Progressive or Secular Talk or The Humanist Report or even Rania Kalik or Sibel Edmonds even, although, I don't know. I didn't like all the hate against the Young Turks, but then again, I don't really watch the Young Turks. I only watch the Jimmy Dore show. Uh, there was like drama between Newsbud and the Young Turks, and it wasn't... I felt it was unjustified, so I stopped watching Newsbud. 
But um, if you learn, if you watch these stuff, you learn about um, all of these like political struggles and like Hillary's maneuvers with the DNC, how she like throttled it on a starvation budget. The DNC is the Democrat, the Democratic National Committee, which is basically runs the primaries for Democrats, so like Bernie Sanders against Hillary Clinton. But like Hillary Clinton controlled all the funds. And so she had this, like, contract where basically she says what the money for the DNC can be spent on. I know it's bad because that's financial rigging of the election process. Um, <clears throat> and the voting machines, the military wants to take over the voting machines because the voting machines have been compromised. They're easily hackable. If you put some hackers, i.e. people who know how to use computers and do coding, because Hacking used to mean coding. So you put in some white hat hackers in a, in a room with some voting machines. Within 10 minutes, they'll hack into the voting machines and be like, yeah, these voting machines suck. You should toss them out. Um, and other countries have like open source voting machine software or blockchain. Do they have blockchain? I think they do. Um, so, and there's a paper trail, right? In US, as soon as exit polls mismatch the votes, Throw out the paper, burn the paper, shred it, erase the evidence. And so when you ask for a recount or when you pay for a recount, you don't get a recount. What you get is those ballots being fed back into the voting machines. And when the tallies don't add up, switch the tally so it adds up with the voting machine count. Because the voting machine count is God and you have to match up with the voting machine count. Not literally. I'm... I think when you're an atheist, you have to be an agnostic, which is means when you talk about God, you have to ask someone what they mean by that. Because there's so many different gods. There's Zeus, there's Yahweh, there's... <sighs> there's Panentheist God, there's Jesus God, there's Trinity God, there's like God as defined by any benevolent deity which uh, created the universe, or created the man, or is omnipotent, or is benevolent towards humanity. But, like, is there a benevolent deity that is benevolent towards humanity? Like, we have aging, which is solvable by um, gene therapy. Well, not solvable by gene therapy, but gene therapy can mitigate aging. And... Uploading our consciousness into a computer simulation can solve aging. And then there's also sick, twisted things like organ harvesting, which also mitigate aging. Um. <laughs> so there's solutions to aging. But we have aging. There's solutions to predation. I'm vegan. Um because I don't like rape, I don't like torture, I don't like murder, I don't like violence. Um, and I can feel kind of guilty. So even if I'm just a utility monster with a perceptual control theory layering of priorities which are combating my um, my motivation, my, <clears throat> my priorities to maximize and optimize my environment that I'm living in, so that I'm just a thing with consciousness and free will being a product of the physical uh, instinct to optimize my environment, like, you know, the fight or flight, you know, the, 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 the growth or pain, you know, that kind of simple mindset. If you apply that to me and say I'm a utility monster with no soul, then, um, no, I forget the point. Uh, if you say I'm a utility monster with no soul, then... Wait, maybe that was my point. With no free will, then, um... Then you get the philosophical, philosophical zombie argument, which is, okay, what's the difference between being a soulless utility mo or What's the difference between being a soulless zombie that's been taught it has a soul versus, um... being a person with a soul that does have a soul. Uh, 
and the difference is, well, depending on how you define a soul, it's the same thing, interchangeable. Uh, <clears throat> so that's an interesting philosophical question, which I learned from Murasakiro no Qualia. I should finish reading that. Um, it got, but it got creepy. <laughs> so, um... It was more creepy than Hoseki no Kuni. Is Hoseki? I don't know. They could have made Hoseki no Kuni so creepy, but it, they made it beautiful instead. I need to watch it. I haven't... I know. I'm I'm a fan of Sword Art Online and Hoseki no Kuni, but all I've done is read the light novels or the mangas. And, <laughs> and I haven't actually seen any of the anime. Maybe if I had a girlfriend to watch with. Anyways, um... Oh yeah! So even if I'm a soulless utility monster, I can still feel guilty about paying people to torture and rape and slaughter and just violently abuse animals and all the horrible stuff that happens to chickens and other animals. And pigs are actually more intelligent uh, than, like, babies, humans. So, especially if they've had a good upbringing and can go outside and explore and exercise, but exercise is bad for what is it grain to meat ratio it's like this livestock ratio it's like you only you want to like minimize the amount of grain you use to grow livestock oh by the way petro agriculture is fucking us over because um we haven't gotten ready for the transition away from petro and <clears throat> right now we use like plastic for everything <coughs> and we need plastic to transition to renewable <clears throat> So that's going to be a problem when the price of oil skyrockets because we won't be able to produce the stuff that we need to manufacture. But also, same thing with what is it? Helium, nitrogen, liquid? Oh no, is it the stuff they use for making computer chips? That gas? Anyways, uh, we're gonna go to that too. <coughs> but um, the not helium. Not helium, not helium. Fuck, I forgot. Oh yeah, I, I can feel guilty about stuff via Epicureanism, or however you want to say. It just makes you feel guilty if you're screwing other people over, because I don't like preventable suffering, um, just as an effect of humanism. So a utility monster can feel loneliness and compassion, uh, which I do feel sometimes, especially towards herbivores. Um, not, not well, not loneliness towards herbivores, but compassion altruism uh, that's like also towards AI um, if those AI are self-aware I mean, there's a there's an argument to be made for AI at what point should an AI be considered a person and I think it's uh, there's a lot of cognitive abilities that go into being what a person is and I think that consciousness needs to be defined so that we can establish rights for AI. Not just considering them a person for the purposes of taxation, but considering them a purpose, a person for the purposes of human rights applying to AI, as well as animals. <clears throat> because they're essentially human. We share the DNA. Um, we need to get past the barbarism of eating meat, because that's just so wrong. Um, but You can make the argument that the world is a horrible fucked up place and it's just survival of the fittest and cannibalism goes and rape goes and murder goes and that, um, what is it, that it's okay to abuse people and commit acts of violence because they are going to die anyways. But when you take that stance, it's very hypocritical because then you're saying that it's okay to do that to you as well. And I don't think that's a very... <clears throat> it's a very mentally disturbed um, world view. But what a lot of people do is apply selective nihilism and say it's okay to do this stuff to other people, but not yourself or your friends or your family. Um, and that's... That empowers a lot of cruelty, not just... It empowers cruelty and justifies cruelty for the sake of selfishness. When you say, oh... 
world's going to be destroyed, so we can do whatever we want. Or when you say, this person's going to die at some point, therefore I can fuck them over however I want. Then that's very um, malicious. And I think hypocritical. Because when you define a person, it should be based on the traits that form consciousness or the expression of consciousness. However you define consciousness, whether it's cognitive abilities or intelligence or their ethnicity or their species. So <clears throat> even if you see yourself as a utility monster trying to optimize their environment, um, I think there should be guilt from exploitation, whether it's exploiting workers overseas, whether it's exploiting animals, um, whether it's committing violence and mass murder against humans for the sake of profit margins, or of, like, well, what's the incentive? The incentivization for profit margins is just ridiculous with pay raises. I think pay raises should be based more a bit on long-term profits and sustainability more than just quarterly profits because that leads to a lot of instability and exploitation but um i don't know really what i'm talking about i'm just parroting what someone else said on that topic because i don't know much about big companies and i think people with morals get weeded out of big company management because they're like hey we should pay workers fairly hey we should stop exploiting people hey we should stop torturing animals and then they're like well that's not profitable you're fired you're demoted <laughs> My mom got promoted at a tire plant, and she's like, well, we shouldn't fire workers. And they're like, yeah, I don't think you're su suited for management. So it's a systemic problem. We pay people to make money. We pay, we pay When we buy something at a store, we're making a choice. We don't buy this calculator. There's habitat destruction going into this calculator. When I buy a car, <clears throat> what is this made out of? What is this made out of? What are the insides made out of? It all has to be mined and manufactured and transported before I can use the calculator. And then, when the calculator breaks, maybe I throw it out, go to a landfill, to the ocean, to wherever. Is it going to decompose? What's going to happen? Pollution. Habitat destruction, pollution, and of course, exploitation of whoever is an intermediary, whether it be animal, human, or onlooker. <laughs> So, uh, someone who maybe lived on that land. <sighs> so, um, I like calculators, though. I even like feathered pillows. That one's from before I went vegan. But I am due to get a new pillow. Hopefully there's vegan pillows. Same with bread. Sometimes the bread's like, may contain butter, and I'm like, may contain? Does it or not? And now I'm just addicted to ciabatta baguettes, so. Especially olive bread and hummus. Oh, hummus. Olive hummus. Olive hummus is the way. All right, um, I've ranted on enough. There's more stuff I want to say. This is just me trying to express these ideas as they come out. So it's very unformulated. <clears throat> Ideally, I'd have like everything in sections and try to like have little charts and be like, well, this falls into this category, but that's like conflicting with that category. So we need to fall both at once. And if people had social skills to work along with each other on a common basis, because everybody will have conflicting priorities, conflicting stances. Um, but you don't, <clears throat> in order to reject the lesser evil, you can still work with evil people to accomplish your goals. You don't have to make concessions, but when someone agrees with you on a policy that needs to be passed, you can you can just hold off on the demonization for a second and say, you know what? We agree with this. This is our common foundation. We're going to work together on that, get that policy passed, because politicians are the most immature children around. 
<laughs> reminisce below.